Hi, this is Greg in Pensacola, Florida. I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Tonight is part 12 of the modular end build with Her Starts Molds. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I put a video out. It's a school startup down here in Florida. So the first couple months I work for the school system, do get a little busy. So I think we're over the uh, the main busy parts right now and it should be settling out some. So just want to catch you up on what I've been doing and uh, we'll go over a few things. First, I tried uh, on some of the smaller parts to do the the time lapse videos and it doesn't work because my hands are all over these small parts and it's just hard to build and uh, actually try to keep it on camera with any type of uh, success. So tonight's going to be more of a show and tell. We're going to show you on the plans what we're going to do and I'm going to show you the end result that came out. Haven't painted anything yet. Just about done with this page three. I'm just going to paint all this stuff at once. It's just a really, it's a bunch of smaller items. So when we left off on the last video, I had shown you the let me get a pointer. I'd shown you the hallways that we did. So the hallways are done on um, there. So we finished all that. So the next thing we we're going to move on to is the balcony. And so basically with the balcony here on the floor, we got two different types of tiles. We have the uh, the normal one inch by one inch tile. And then we also had these one inch by half inch. So it might be a little hard to see right there. Let me zoom in. But if you look, we have some staggering of the different tiles. Now I use some of the one inch and then the half inch. I didn't use all the half inch tiles through this piece right here. So my finished piece looks like this. And I've got the, uh, the sidewalls, the railings are on there. So what's going to happen is we're going to paint this up in the brown using the two shade method. And then I'll trim off this black foam core off here. And then this will be a piece that's going to sit up in the air and uh, the stairs are going to hook up onto it. So that is the balcony. So all we got to do on that is go ahead and paint. The next piece, pillars. We got a total of 16 pillars. We got 12 two and a half. And then we got four two and a quarter. And what's going to happen is, is that once I'm finished painting the two and a half inch pillars, two of them are each going to go on a square piece of foam core, but the two and a quarter piece pillars will not. And that that difference in height is if you're going to raise the piece outside of the in itself, or if it's going to be actually inside. So if it's going to be inside the in, it's just going to be on these straight two and a quarter inch pieces if the room that's elevated is actually going to be outside the inn, so like on the edge sitting off to the side, it's going to go on these two and a half inch pieces that are on that foam core so everything will even up on there. So that's what it's going to look like when it's done. And so what I have is a whole bunch of pieces that look like this right now. So I've got 12 of the two and a halves and then I got four of the two and a quarters. You can see them right here. This is a combination of you're looking at one, two, three, four, five pieces right here. So that's a half inch by half inch square. And then these come out of the ruin uh, mold 75 out of the ruin fieldstone mold. And so that's what it is right here. You get these pieces out of that mold and that's what will make this up. So let me move all these out of the way because there's a bunch of them. Like I said, that part there went together with pretty much no issues at all. The next part, the stairs. This here took a little bit to do on there. Um, this part right here went together really good. They uh, just click in. The side railings, you know, that was a little bit, a little bit different. Um, not too bad. Once you, you start gluing together, you'll see how these you know that the the railing pieces are thinner than the panels you, you'll see that when you start putting it together um, and then what we did is we had a the beginning of the curve stair and then we also had the flat stair that comes up so let's we'll see what we got here yeah so what I'm going to show you is the actual finished piece so that flat stair coming up is right here and it turns right into the the curved center so this is really nice this I'm looking forward to seeing this painted up um, 
was a little tricky to keep some of these pieces in, you know, so they would dry right. But basically this this piece is going to sit there. Oops. Here we go with the camera again. Um, it's going to sit there like this. So, and that's going to butt up to the balcony. It can also butt up to another set of stairs. I have a whole ton of these pieces left. So, I could build a whole bunch of different stairs on there. I mean, it's when I look in that bin over there for these pieces, there's a bunch. So I have no shortage of stair making material. So that's the stair. So that's the combination of the straight up piece right here and this curved walkway on there. So once it dried up overnight, you know, it came out really nice. The next stair is going to be a um, stair. Oh, let me show you this right here. You got to kind of on this internal part right where this is in here you gotta nick off some of the plaster I just used an exacto knife and it was actually worked out pretty easy you just kinda you nick in here in this corner like he's showing right here and then everything will seam right up fine on there and it, it's actually a really good fit and so ours should look like this when it's done all the other brown pieces will look just like his brown pieces when they're done so like I said I'm excited to get the paint onto these pieces and get them done. All right, the next piece is gonna be a stairs with a platform. So this one here is the made up of three pieces. So you've got your initial walkway piece, which is right here. And if you look what happens when you're doing this, you'll see that these stairs, they just kind of lock right on top of each other for the for the platforms. So each one of these has two steps on it and it goes up and they sit, you'll know they'll sit right down in the sides of this uh, of this piece right here. So it actually worked out real well. This part right here, this is the um, the platform itself. That this was a little tricky. My platform is probably not as perfect as I would like it, but it'll work on there. Like I said, I have enough pieces that I can make more of these if I really want, but there's a little note in here. Back side of platform will overhang slightly. This is where I don't read. <laughs> when I'm looking at the plans, I get so caught up in looking at these pictures, I'm putting it together, I miss this note right here. And it doesn't hang over much. It does not have to go. Very, when you look right here at this edge, that's about all I would need to push that back. So you're talking, it's less than a millimeter. You know, that it's really small. But that's the platform when it's done. It's just a nice square platform. So what'll happen is that'll sit here like this. And then this set of stairs will come up butt right up against it and then there's a third piece that's this high oops. that's this high platform right here so if you look when you're done you should have a piece that looks like this which that is this right here so what that's meant to do is that this part right here is going to sit up against like this let me move this tablet and it'll sit up there just like that so and then you know plenty of room for a fig right there on the side let me try and tilt it a little bit you know so again I think it came out looking decent on there yeah I could work on the tolerances a little bit but for it you know it's going in a an RPG N, you know, but like I said, tons of pieces left. Can definitely make some more. Alright, so that was that was the stairs. And that's what it should look like when it's done. The wall lens. So these are what we're using to block different areas of the inn from the outside. So if we're doing hallways between two large rooms these are what can block the ends of those halls and so when you look on here <clears throat> this piece right here that we started to make is actually going to be the entranceway to the inn itself 
So when this is all said and done, this is what it's going to look like at the end. Right now I have it in this stage right here. I also have the door and the lanterns. These will get painted separately. The other lantern fell off when I moved it. You know, and that'll go right there in that opening. So, but right now this is ready to be painted gray and we'll do that. So that's, that's what it looks like in the plan and that's what it looks like on my table. So, and the way that's going to work is, I believe this is the entrance to the inn. This will be the, this is where the, you know, that door opening is right there. So this piece would sit right outside like this. So I'm pretty sure you can see that. That's how it would sit. It's going to have the door in there. It's going to have the lit lanterns. So this would be the actual entrance to your inn. It's going to start here and then it will move to different spots inside the inn. So the entrance way. Back to the tablet. All right, so we needed to make one of those. Then we had this one with the inset window, um, and that's going to be this piece right here. So this one also has another lip on it. Um, I'm going to find where exactly this goes in the pictures. I need to look at some of his pictures to see how he uses some of these wall lens. But he kind of had me half recess this window. Um, the next piece is, I think it's the next piece that I'm going to show you, has a full recess on the window. I think I like the full recess better where this piece right here is completely flat with the back and gives a bigger indentation up here. If I had to do this piece again, I would uh, definitely push this all the way to the back. And speaking of doing this piece again, I am down to like 10 blocks left. So I do not have enough field stone blocks to make anything else wall wise. All right. Um, yeah, here we go. So if you look at this one right here, see how far back these windows are set in? And that's what it looks like, you know, for real. And then if you look at this one right here, if you put them side by side, I just, I like the depth oops, of this one better. You know, it just, to me, it, it it's just a little better and if I wanted to put some type of decoration into the window I could actually get it in there so that's that. Uh, the small ones so I had to make two of these they got the recessed windows that's one two so these are all wall blockers they're gonna go and seal up some more of the holes in the room now we get to the fireplaces these are pretty neat uh, we use a bunch of different molds, so we use mold 5759, and these are the thin wall blocks right there. And the first fireplace we're going to make is going to look like this. And when it's done, it should look like that. And so that fireplace is right here. You see some of the white blocks. Remember, that's the uh, the old Merlin's Magic I used to use when I did the demolding video. So. Uh, so that's one of the fireplaces and we'll paint up a log and we'll glue it in there when it's all done. So that was the first fireplace. Then the second fireplace kind of has a, uh, a shelf on it. Now this fireplace right here is a little bit tight on, um, when you try to put it in the doorways. When I get done here I'll show you how this thing sits in some of the doorways. So what I need to do is just take really lightly and just kind of sand right here at this corner and then maybe sand right here on this side and it's just it's just a little bit wider than this side of the wall right here so it goes in probably 80 percent of the doors but there's a couple doors that it's a little tight i don't want to push too hard on and then our last standalone fireplace is this one right here i really like this one you know so this is right there you'll see it in the picture and all built. So this is using those really small fieldstone texture. I really like that. I need to find more uses for that small one. Um, I got plenty of these blocks left over also, so I can build more fireplaces. Like I said, that one that I built that has a wide bottom on it, 
if that becomes a real issue on getting it in the doors, I can build two, three more of these, slap them in the doors with no problem. All right, now we hit the kitchen ovens. These are a little bit bigger. And what we have, well, before I show you the kitchen ovens, let's go back to these openings. So what we got is if I grab one of the, one of the bedrooms from before, this fireplace, if I wanted to block off, you know, this door right here, sits in there just like that. So when this is painted up, I can put that fireplace right into place. You know, if I want it on the other door, you know, I can just bring it over here. You know, you put it down, and this is where you kind of slide them in. And it's tight. It's a tight fit. When I get that painted, you know, it'll snug right in there. It's not going to go anywhere. You know, and I can put it right there also. So that's what these are for, is to block up these extra entrances and exits to your room you know so if you only want one way into this room you would put one of these in there you know or we may be able to figure out some other design to put in there also that's just not a fireplace but these look really good and they're going to look good when it's got the painted log and other stuff in the bottom so we make three of these there's plenty of blocks left i could easily make three to four more all right now we'll get on to the kitchen let me get this to rotate. The kitchen ovens. So in the uh, the kitchen itself, and that's the last room we worked on. Remember we worked on the kitchen. That's the one with the hole in the floor that goes down to the cellar. Well, that has two ovens in it. So this is the first oven right here, and this door is separate. I did not put the door on right now. Let me get this. There we go. And so that's what it looks like in the plans, and that's what it looks like right here. So. When we paint the door, we paint the door separate. It'll fill in that whole hole right there. And then this is using those small blocks to put together. Yeah, this came out. This is going to look really good when it's done. Then this right here is the beginning of the large. It's this piece right here when it's done. So that that's what it's going to look like. And this is what it's going to look like when it's in place. So, and that long piece is this right here. So, what we're trying to do with these two pieces, and these will probably be, these will be permanently affixed when they're done. Let me see how, is that this one will go right here, and this oven will go right there along that back wall. So that'll look just like that. And then we'll be able to decorate yeah, we'll be able to put items on here. We'll put stuff on the wall. But like I said, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to um, permanently glue these in because this will always be the kitchen because I'm going to fill these sh these shelves up that are on the other side over here. These will have items in them also. All right. So that right there was the it's not shrinking. That was the kitchen oven. So it's gonna go in the kitchen, obviously. And then down here, the last thing I have not done, and this is the step I'm on right now, is the large fireplace. This is gonna have the mantle, this is gonna have the large fireplace opening, and stuff like that. And so this right here is most likely gonna go in the main room of the end. So where I showed you at the beginning where this goes, on the far wall there's actually a door opening, but this large fireplace with the mantle can sit right down in front of that. So that may end up looking pretty good. On there. So that that is the last piece that I need to build. Um so project wise we're probably looking at two more videos. Um the next video I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint all this stuff. So when we come back, this will all be painted. It'll be the you know, the longer pieces will be on the uh, foam core like they're supposed to. The stairs will be brown and the two shades that we do on the stairs. Everything else will be gray. So after that, we get to the point where I need to paint a whole bunch of accessories. And if you remember a few videos back, I talked about this is probably where I'm just going to let the camera roll. I'm going to paint. 
you know, a whole bunch of stuff. And then I'm just going to kind of, I'm not going to let it run. No, I might let it run for two hours, but I may end up dropping it, time lapsing it down to 30, 40 minutes, and then just put an overlay track on there, just talking about, you know, um, what I like about the hobby, what I like about the hearth starts, my gaming, you know, preferences and stuff like that. So you can watch me paint. You can hear me talk about something that's not about the painting, the exact item in front of me, because it does get pretty easy. But I may, if I get to a certain area, talk about the piece I'm painting. But mostly it'll just be talking about the channel, you know, where we're going to go from here. And so after that video, um, so that video will be part 12. And then part 13 will be the completion. So what I'll do is I'll move this out into my uh, big living room and we'll set it on the table where we play War Machine. I'll get it all set up. I'll bring the cameras and lights and stuff out there and uh, try to go through a couple different configurations and show you the completed, completed project. And uh, then we'll talk about where we go from there. And you know, so far we're 11 parts in now and we're still moving right along. I wish I would have done this with the space corridor. You know, I get that itch in the back of my head because this one has gone so smooth. I keep telling myself, oh, you can go back and do the space corridor again. We may revisit that, but we're not going to revisit the advanced set. If I do the space corridor, it's going to be a one for one tile with what's in my Space Hulk third edition box. I don't need all that extra stuff. I, I go down to the game shop that my buddy has here in Pensacola. And just the other day, I was in the back where he uh, stores some of his stuff, and all of it is sitting there, and none of it is painted. I mean, he started painting it. He started paying guys to paint some of it, and it didn't make a dent. And so what we've done here with, you know, painting as we go is just been a lifesaver. You know, I've seen another and maybe – a year from now, I'll learn how to center all this up in the camera. Um, I've seen a couple other channels that have started this project. And just like my Space Corridor one, it just doesn't get done. You get that mountain of stone in front of you, you know, and it's just a sea of white and gray. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm never going to get all this painted. Yeah, it's kind of like my War Machine figures. When you're five factions in and you have every model for all five factions, you're going, I'm never going to get all this painted. Yeah, but this process right here has worked out really well. You know, and the comments seem good. When we go on to the next project, I'm going to use that new style of video I have, but there's going to be parts like this right here. It wouldn't have worked in here. These these pieces are too small so my hands gluing this is what you would have seen for the whole video is my big old hands holding these pieces and stuff like this so doing stuff like this this detail work that's just got it's just not feasible to do the time lapse stuff but doing the rooms like this this is a lot of fun actually you know being able to do the overlays on top of these rooms and things like that so so what we got next is tons of accessories I've got beds and and more beds and chess yeah and there's all kinds of stuff in this bucket right here you know I mean all those little pieces I'm just gonna start fishing all those little pieces out of the bottom get a whole bunch of furniture built and then we'll start shooting that video so I know it was a little bit rambly tonight no finished product but we're getting close I mean we are two videos away um, I will definitely have all these pieces knocked out and painted by this weekend I don't have any plans to, to go anywhere this weekend so I think I'm gonna stay here I'm gonna work on this um, might pop up another video showing you the completed pieces, but I'd rather just keep on moving forward. We'll knock out that large fireplace with the mantle, get into painting those accessories. I would really like to paint those accessories by Sunday. You know, just let the let the camera roll on Sunday, get a whole bunch of stuff painted out, you know, paint a few beds, paint a few dressers, paint some tables, do some more chests and bowls and everything else that we need to do to start decorating out the dungeon. And then the video after that will be the completed dungeon. So, not dungeon, but the completed inn. And uh, 
really excited. I think this project has come out good. Has come out good. I've passed 700 subscribers, so I want to thank everybody for that. You know, I really appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. The comments you guys leave are always great. Um, I got another 100 pounds of Merlin's Magic that'll be here on Friday coming in, so that's going to put us up 200 pounds of Merlin's Magic. So I've got some ideas for molding. Um, I've got 10 new molds from Her Starts. I'm going to do some demoldings on, and I've got three new molds from uh, a woman on the Her Starts fans of Her Starts on Facebook group. This is a really good group. There are some people with some crazy skills that are in this group. I mean, it's it makes my stuff look like peanuts. It really does. But she has started making molds, and so she's done a rags to riches mold. And she's done a clothing mold, and she does some stuff with the clay. I'm going to do demoldings on her her molds, just like I do uh, the Hearth Starts molds. I'll make another playlist for third-party mold makers, I guess, because it seems like there's more people coming out with some different stuff, you know. And I really like it. I talked to her. Her name's Michelle. She is great to talk to on Facebook. She's cranking out a brand-new mold, too, that I've already pre-ordered, and she should be finishing that up soon and sending them out, so... Looking forward to that. So again, thank you for subscribing. Thanks for liking the videos. I really appreciate you guys being here, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.